Can you believe that there has been a Jane Doe that has been unidentified for 37 years? And now a company has picked up her case. And all we need now is just your attention and your time. My name is Sophia Talley, and this is True Crime Annette. So I, for the first time, skipped a week in True Crime and Knit. That is because I am moving. And so that's why my filming area looks different. I'm actually filming in a closet as we speak right now. And my son's hearing me speak. So he is talking. And so hopefully you can't hear too much of that anyway. Let's get started with today's case. On May 19th, 1985, someone found a burning pile of tires near a highway in Fairfield, Connecticut. But when they approached this pile of what looked like just burning garbage, they found the mutilated body of a woman. Upon closer inspection, the woman's hands and feet were removed and they have yet to be found. So reports of what she looked like and how she weighs varied. So I am going to pull this information straight from the Name Us database, which is a government funded website. She is adult, most likely under the age of 40, probably around 30 to 40. So around my age, she weighed roughly 110 pounds. So she was very small and only five even. She is listed as a Black African American woman in the NamUs database. She was wearing a wool wraparound sweater and rustler blue jeans, and her bra was clasped together with two safety pins. She had a pack of Salem cigarettes in her sweater pocket. There was also a plain gold chain recovered from the site of where she was found. Her eye color is unknown, and any other defining features are unknown due to the intensity of the fire. Because of the fire, we also are unsure how she passed away, but the way in which her body was found is leaning towards homicide. Also, with her hand and feet being removed, this may have been someone's method of being sure that she is never identified. Law enforcement tried to identify her, but there was just no information of this of this woman no one was missing her they didn't have any suspects there was no evidence this was prior to dna you know being used in cases so there was absolutely nothing to go on especially with everything being so badly burnt it just was a dead end and they really what they really needed was the public's attention to see if anyone was missing an aunt or a sister or a daughter in the area. It is notable that there is a truck stop roughly 10 miles away from where she was found. So there is a good chance that maybe she was hitchhiking, you know, maybe she was working at the truck stop in one way or another. And so there is a chance that she's not even from the Fairfield area. She could essentially be from anywhere. It is believed though that she died the same day in which she was found. So it all happened very quick. Uh, She passed away and then whoever did whatever to her, we don't know the cause of death, had immediately then thrown her on the side of the road along with some tires and burned her there. The reason why I'm talking about the Fairfield County Jane Doe is because there has been movement with her case. In July 2012, her case was included into the NamUs database. And but even with this, we were still unable to identify her or to link her conclusively to any missing persons cases. In 2022, the Connecticut Office of Chief Medical Examiner actually partnered with Othram and they, in order to conduct a, what they call an advanced forensic DNA test. So that way they could identify her and then be able to give her her name back. 
But this type of advanced DNA testing takes a lot of money. It actually takes $7,500. Seven five zero zero. And so what Ultram does is that they have a website called DNA Solves and in which they accept donations from the public to help fund these this DNA testing. Right now, the Fairfield County Jane Doe has received $1,132.12 towards their $7,500 goal. I highly recommend that everyone go to my show notes and click the link and share it. You don't have to donate. I get it. We just got out the holidays. We're all broke. But I highly recommend everyone click the link and share it and pass it along on your social medias to your family to anything to anyone so that way we can reach our goal of 7500 we need to remember that missing black women are underreported on and they are less likely to be identified or found as opposed to missing white women and so that's why it is very important to share this case so that way we could bring her name back this could be our sister our aunt our niece, anyone. And so we really have to think about that. And what's interesting about this case is that it took me, usually I can just look up any true crime case and find a case that, you know, that people would be interested in hearing. But because I focus on people of color and the LGBTQIA community, it can sometimes take take me hours to dig up a case that is in need of your attention, not because there's less of them, but because they are underrepresented, underreported, and are not often talked about on other true crime media channels. While some of it can be racism, a lot of it, it's just our tribal mentality in which we tend to cling to cases that remind us of our loved ones because it feels real to us. And I'm sorry that that is a short one, but thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. For more information about this show, including show notes and links, please visit www.thedruckmeter.com. And now it's time for the knitter mission. So for today's knitter mission, I am super cozy in my closet. I am wearing my PJs, okay? I just got my lucky hat wrap in the mail. This is the story on my lucky hat wrap, okay? And why? So the lucky hat wrap design that I released for free around Thanksgiving time, it's available for free on Ravelry, and it is designed to be the perfect chemo hat. And I designed this hat for my aunt who was battling cancer, And it's supposed to be something that you could throw on. Like, let me put my head down for a minute so you can see. And if you can't see, it's supposed to be something that you're supposed to just throw on. It's more like a head wrap looking beanie or toque, if that makes sense. It's more, it looks more like a head wrap and it's supposed to look fancy and kind of almost mimic like a cute little updo. It's reversible. You can wear any way you like. The version I'm wearing now has a different construction and it's much more difficult. The one that I designed is an easier construction. It is a one size fit most adult medium and it can be adjusted. I just got my lucky hat wrap back after my aunt passed away from from cancer. My mom shipped me some of her stuff because honestly she was, you know, like one of my favorite people ever. And so my mom shipped me some of her stuff. And she shipped me back the hat wrap that my aunt wore when she went to her chemo appointments because she really loved this hat. What she liked about it was that she could just throw it on for chemo and then, you know, she looked fashionable. So I was super happy to see that my mom found this hat and, you know, gave it back to me. And a day before I opened this hat in the mail, I got contacted by the Amanda, who is behind the Crafty Jackalope, which is like knitting slash yarn store, but they specialize in sparkly yarn, which I find absolutely phenomenal. Amanda from 
the Crafty Jackalope reached out to me because she wanted to create kits for the Lucky Hat Wrap. And she wanted portions of the proceeds from this from this kit to go to the Breast Cancer Canada organization. And what's cool is that these three kits come at three different price points. So you can decide how much you want to spend. And what's cool is that once you make your lucky hat wrap, you know, you can either gift it to someone who needs one or you can donate it or you could just wear it for yourself because it's perfect for anyone, no matter what stage in their life they are in. I actually wear mine all the time because I like to wear it when it's cold and if my hair is all braided up. And my, so my scalp's exposed when my hair is braided up and then I get colder fast versus when I have my fro out. So my lucky hat wrap is like one of my favorite things to like wear to throw on when I'm, when I'm going to the supermarket. So I will actually be wearing this prototype all the time. So if you're interested in picking up a kit, I highly recommend you do. I will be. Then peep the show notes and also check my Instagram. And if you're a Patreon, check my Patreon and I will put it all there and I really hope you guys enjoy them. I am so thankful that she had put these kits together and for a good cause. That is flipping awesome. Anyway, my name is Sophia Talley and this has been True Crime In It. I'll see you later. Bye.